So it's been a while since I posted a video and I wanted to show you what I've been working on. So this is my whole house fan, which I'm going to install in my attic and it will vent out the air in my house and pull in fresh air from outside. I live in a place where it's um, warm during the day but cools down pretty good in the evenings and um, whole house fans are a great way to save some money um, so you don't have to run your AC constantly. So I looked at buying one and found that uh, the good ones that were insulated like this were all over a thousand dollars which was too much for me so I wanted to see if I could make my own and automate it. So this is what I have. It's still not installed obviously. I wanted to show you it uh, before I put it on my put it up in my attic because I don't want to be creating a video up there. Um, so yeah it's an insulated uh, slide and um, automated so I can control it from my phone uh, using my sensors and Arduino. I'll just show you here. So I turn it on uh, and then the slide opens. Uh, hopefully you can hear me here. This engine is fairly loud. Uh, the slide opens a little slow. I actually reused an old RC car engine from my son's broken RC car. Um, so if I were to do it again, I'd probably get a 600 to 800 RPM motor. I think this one's around 300. It's just a little bit slow, but it's free and it works. So you can see here I have a LCD screen. And then this button here, I can also control it on and off from there. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I have a temperature date time and then the status uh, and when this turns on I also have an energy monitoring um, status in there as well that will also send to my uh, controller I send the energy there so it's about to hit the end here hopefully you can hear me So here's the wattage. When it first turns on, it's a little bit inaccurate. Uh, after it's been running for a minute, though, it updates and it's very accurate. I tested with my little kilowatt there. It's very accurate. Okay, so I just turned it off. You can see here it still says it's running, but it's closing the cover. Um, it waits to um, start closing the slide or the cover. Uh, until the fan has been shut off. So this energy monitor is used to monitor how much energy is used, but also to make sure the fan stopped running before it starts closing the cover. Uh, you can see here a little bit, I used drawer slides, just standard kitchen cabinet drawers or whatever drawer slides. Um, I'll post some more about how I actually built this. Uh, i got a little bearing here with some threaded rod. just spins and then closes. This here is this fuel line to join the engine with the threaded rod. And it's about to at the end here. And there we go. Turns off. Sends the state is closed. Uh, other things we have here, we have a, a monitor here to monitor the current used by the engine. If it gets uh, excessive, um, it actually shuts off just to safety. There's also a runtime safety, so if it um, runs for too long, maybe it slips off the, the coupling here or something, it'll shut off after a customizable time. So for me, I think it's around 70 seconds. Uh, we have a DHT22 here, temperature humidity sensor, so we can see how warm it is in the attic. Um, obviously the radio and the Arduino. It's just running off a Pro Mini. Uh, and then the LCD. So now that it stopped, you can see it changed its state to idle here, or its status. Um, back here, let me just show you. I have this uh, turning on and off with a uh, microwave, I guess, radar sensor. Basically, it senses motion and then turns on or off the LCD. So save a little energy that way. Well, more just save the LCD, I guess uses hardly any energy but it'll turn it off when no one's around and moving so when you walk by it it'll turn on but um, obviously turn off when you're not near it.
So I've had my whole house fan installed for over a month and I wanted to show you what it looks like. I uh, have made a couple of modifications to it so I'm going to point those out as well. Uh, this is what it looks like installed. Um, I have insulation uh, right up around the box here so it ends up being about R30. Uh, that's what the cover is and then obviously it's sloped up here and then it's 12 inches deep in my attic so the cover is the weakest point but it still ends up being R30 which is pretty good. Um, you can see probably the most obvious addition here is my flexible duct work I installed and then the fan is over there. It's only about six feet long and um, the reason I added this is it was it was too loud with the fan mounted right on top as I was originally designing and hoping that it would work. Um, it, was, it was just too loud uh, when I added the duct work, just six feet of it, it's amazing how much quieter it is. So we can run this at night or, you know, during the day when there's conversations, if it's cool enough out, and you barely hear it. If you have internal HVAC, it, it's just a little bit louder than the, the fan on that. Here I just added a plastic cover. I made a little wood frame for it. Um, basically, that's just to keep some of the dust out. Um, it's not really filled or covered back here, um, but it seems to be remaining pretty clean. Uh, I added a little um, bike oil, chain oil, to the threaded rod. That helps it slide a little bit better and also makes it a little bit quieter. Um, I posted this on a, a little flash screen on the video, but I, I brought up the voltage to 8 volts on my motor and now it closes much faster instead of around 70 seconds it's probably around 35 seconds so about half the time so I mounted the fan just by using some strapping here this is a, a strap for a car or a truck um, just wrapped around the fan a couple times and then just hung it from the ceiling uh, it's working really well uh, helps it float a little bit um, so there's no vibrations passed down through the, the walls uh, and then I just taped on using some Tyvek tape, um, tape that you use for insulation, uh, rigid foam insulation on your house. I'm sure other tape would work, but this is really good tape. Um, so it's just holding the ductwork to the fan. The ductwork is just slightly smaller, so it wouldn't fit all the way around. So I just taped it, and it's holding up really well so far. This is my LCD cable here. It's just a Cat5 cable, um, and it just runs down, drill the hole into my ceiling, runs down my wall, and I'll show you that in a second. Just want to show you quickly what the plastic cover looks like. Just cover it with a board. It's just held on there. It's not stapled or nailed or anything. Uh, it holds up just fine. So here's the LCD mounted to the wall. And then going up, here is the air intake. The grate is just for a fluorescent light for an office. Uh, I got it at my local uh, home goods store, Home Depot, and just cut it down so it works as a great air intake. Um, and then uh, just shine a flashlight up here so you can see a little bit. There is the insulated cover that opens and closes. And that is it. Okay, before I end the video, I wanted to go over the code really quick here. So you're going to need to add these libraries, most of which will come with my sensors when you install it. Um, the Adafruit ones will not, though. So you can add those by going to Sketch, Include Library, and Manage Libraries and then you can search for them here and install them. If you want, you can change the node ID, the sketch name, create a repeating node if you want. Further down, we have TFT display on. So if you're going to do any debugging or troubleshooting, you're going to want to comment this out and then uncomment the debug. Uh, you can't have both of them on at the same time because the code is too large and it won't compile on a standard Arduino. Further down we have the stall values which you're going to need to customize for your motor that you're using. So the stall values are there to kill power to your slide motor uh, if it stalls out so it doesn't burn it out or cause other issues uh, by keep trying to close or open it if it's stalled out. So what you're going to need to do is take a reading of the ACS712 and then clamp down the shaft with your fingers or some other device so it stops moving and then read that value. Uh, you need to do this for both opening and closing 
and then you're going to want to enter that value into the, the code here just slightly less than what it actually stalled out at. So during normal closing, um, it'll keep on running and it'll be fine, but if it stalls out, it'll go past this value in the code and then stop your motor and send an error message. The next is a cover limit time. Um, this will stop the motor from turning if it's exceeded that time, so you're going to want to set it just slightly over the standard close time and this is just a safety to stop it from running endlessly if, if it for whatever reason falls off the coupling or just keeps on running. Next we have house voltage down here, so I'm in America, so we're on 110, but you're going to want to change this to 220 if you're in a country that uses 220. Okay, so that's it. Like I said before, this is just a high-level overview, not an in-depth build instructional video. But um, if you did want to build it, check out the link in the video description for more details on how to do that yourself. Thanks for watching, everyone.